If you, like me, are a judgmental asshole, you probably hold a duality within yourselves about that fact. On the one hand, you've probably gotten a lot of notes from various people in your life to not be so judgmental or to not be so negative. And it's easy to see those people's points. You can probably think back to a few times or if you're like me, a few hundred thousand times where your judgmental nature made people feel bad and because of that made your life worse too. On the other hand, you can probably also think back to plenty of times where people were doing some dumbass shit and it deserved to get judged. People as a whole are horrible idiots, and if you happen to be one of the people that was born with the blessing and curse of being able to see just how horrible and just how idiotic people are, then what are you supposed to do? Shut the fuck up and pretend we're all dancing on a rainbow in the clouds together? And if you're also, also like me, then being a judgmental asshole isn't something that you can turn on and off like a light switch. Every fiber of my being wants to judge every single thing I ever see or hear. It's baked into the backbone of who I am as a human. My options are to judge or to pretend I'm not judging. And if you're also, also, also like me, then despite whatever flack you may get for being judgmental, you're not super excited to slowly work on being more accepting and overall less judgmental in general. You know, being a judgmental asshole feels good. It feels correct and feels useful. So how can we use this quality about ourselves to win at life and get those fucking positive poppies off our back? Well, I think we have to start by understanding our judgmental nature. To know how we should feel about this quality, what feelings we should have about it, and to know if what we're doing is good or should be changed, we have to understand how this quality developed and what it's gotten us so far. And since you can't be a judgmental asshole until you're born, that means the genesis of our judgmental assholeness was childhood. Although we're probably already judgmental assholes by age one, it takes a few years of motor and language skills before anyone else or even ourselves notice. Then take the fact that all kids are assholes, judgmental or otherwise, and let's say that around middle school is when the world at large and yourself is noticing that you're really overachieving in the realm of judgment. And first off, congratulations! By being an observant, critical person, you have entered the hallowed halls of every artist, comedian, doctor and scientist, and generally some really cool people who have done great things. Unfortunately, you've also unwittingly bought a ticket on the depression anxiety train that stops at least three times a day in Freakout Land, whose eventual destination is a miserable, bitter life city. Those idiots you're super sure are idiots, their train tickets may not be taking them to the Great Taste Lakes, but it's going to be a lot harder for them to end up in West Studio Apartment with all the windows blocked out because the fucking sun should understand that my natural sleep schedule means that I wake up at 4 p.m. every day, Bill. And don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed plenty of good sleep until 4 p.m. day, but just like Adam Sandler movies, if they're being enjoyed more than occasionally, something's really wrong. So by middle and high school, we are established judgmental assholes, and I'd say one of the earliest ways people discover their judgmental assholes is through pop culture and media taste. You know, maybe you've discovered videos, channels, music, TV shows, and movies that you love, and the people around you just can't see why they're good. I remember the first time I learned about Quentin Tarantino in Adult Swim, and I was like, wait, stuff can be this good? It isn't all generic and middle of the road? Or maybe your judgment is centered around stuff you hate that other people like. Easy go-tos are sports, reality TV, and religion. When you have such a deep hatred of certain activities and they're so plainly useless to you, and then you're looking around the crowd seeing everyone's raptured faces, it can be disorienting. Like, I guess something's wrong with me, but I don't want to be like them. And then there's the less fun version of judging your family. Chances are you probably have at least a thing or two in the back of your mind that for as long as you can remember, you've known you're going to do differently than your family or caregivers. Sometimes the most powerful lesson is to learn by reverse example, to be forced to endure some dynamic or decision for so long that's so against whatever you want for yourself that you get a steel resolve to never do things the same way. So with these early judgments, I say judge away, judge to your heart's content because maybe the way that you're going to figure out 
who you are and what you're all about is going to be through judgment. Judgment is one of our earliest tools to start defining ourselves. I think these things are cool and I think these things are boring and that's different from the people around me. So now I understand some of my own unique qualities. All these years later as an adult, I still love weird animation more than almost anything. I hate sports and my reverse parent decisions are going pretty great. Especially if you come from a family that happens to be negative and judgmental, which is not exactly unlikely for someone who's noticing all these traits about themselves, you may not have any other way to figure out who you are. And it can be extra frustrating when your super chaotic or dysfunctional family won't listen to you ever about how to improve things, but still finds time to shit on you for being too judgmental. You have to figure out what you're going to strive for when you're on your own, and judging the shit out of everything you see is a great way to start figuring that stuff out. So. What happens next? Well, eventually you get more agency. It's one thing to be a feisty teen because you're being dragged to church every Sunday. You're forced to go to school and learn a bunch of subjects that aren't particularly interesting. There's no escape from football because it's the only socializing the town and school does. And you're trapped inside with your parents who eat baked chicken breasts with no seasoning every night. There's lots to rally against there. You're powerless and your future really will be fucked if you rebel so hard that you drop out of school and scream at everyone that they're a bunch of sheeple, sheeple they may be. So from there, let's zoom it all the way to the end and say you're a nice old 99 on your deathbed. If at this point you don't have anything positive to say, that's on you. <laughs> sure, your childhood has an effect on you your whole life, but eventually we all have to take some accountability. So if you go your whole life and don't like any of it, that's not great. So if judgment is a tool to define yourself by at the start of your life, and a sad symbol of no growth at the end of your life, what is it like in between those two points? How do you transition? Well, we fix this problem just like we fixed all the other problems with judgment. And this time we have to get meta. We have to start judging the judgments. The biggest failure judgmental people have is not that they're judgmental, it's that they don't judge their own judgments. You're a self-proclaimed judgmental asshole. You clicked on this video and I bet you feel real justified when you're judging the shit out of someone else's error in judgment. So you are not off the hook now. And if you haven't been judging your own judgments, then I'm judging you. Judgmental assholes don't get to escape from judgment. We have to lean into the judgment, become the Sheryl Sandbergs of judgment. We have to embrace the judgment, let the judgment run through our veins. So let's look at our judgments. This is how most judgmental people think about their judgments. They're just like, yep, that's me. I judge stuff. But once you start judging your judgments and for bonus points, literally writing them down so you can remember them over time, we can start to get a little bit more information about them and then start to do some grouping. Maybe we start noticing things like this. That person's an idiot. This TV show is dumb. I'm really stupid at math. And after judging our judgments, we can maybe look at it more like this. That person's an idiot, but they're my boss, so my only option is to suck it up. That person's an idiot, so why do I care so much about what they think about me? This TV show is dumb. This judgment doesn't affect me in any way. I'm really stupid at math because I'm a lazy, shitty person who won't ever achieve anything. So. Over time, we aren't just a judgmental person, we're a person who makes judgments like these. These make people around me feel bad. These ones make me feel bad, and they're kind of extreme to the point of probably being inaccurate. These are harmless hot takes that make life more fun. And once you've been writing down the judgments for a while, and we've learned the categories that our judgments fall into, and we've spent some time thinking about their effect on our life, you'll start to make some discoveries. Maybe you'll discover you really hate one of your friends and that about half of your judgments are just gripes about them. Maybe you'll discover that your judgments are funny and start doing stand-up comedy. Maybe you'll discover that half your judgments are self-hating thoughts that are actually making your life worse and you can work on being less harsh to yourself. Maybe you'll discover that your judgments are all actually perfectly fine, healthy, and fair, and you won't change anything about them except to find people who can handle some tough facts more than the people currently around you. Whatever you discover, 
I guarantee your judgments will give you some insights to yourself because judgments are really just strong feelings that you have. In high school, I used my judgments for nothing. I just had a lot of them, they were spiraling around. At the end of college, I used my judgments to get me from Georgia to California. I was judging everyone for not doing what I was doing and my burning judgment of everyone else being okay to stay in Georgia made me realize, oh, it's really important for me to escape back to California. At my first job, I used my judgments of how fucking miserable everyone was to escape becoming a chemist. In grad school, I judged myself for not wanting to do chemistry, and my judgments got to a low point where I almost decided to kill myself. After college, I started organizing my stray observations and random judgments into stand-up. In my 20s, I started to realize some self-judgments were really hurting me, and in my 30s, I started to realize that some judgments against other people meant that I should really just stop talking to those other people. So in between realizing you're a judgmental asshole sometime in childhood and dying, use your judgments as a roadmap. Ideally, you should be working your ways towards being around people that you don't feel so judgmental of that you hate them, and doing things that don't make you so miserable that you have nothing but judgments. And you'll probably find that just being allowed some distance from people that are making really different decisions than you would have allows you to be a little bit softer on them, you know? I personally can't stand football, but just getting to a place where people aren't talking to me about it every weekend, even though I have no interest, really lets me just ease up and be like, they can do their own thing. I don't feel the need to continue to judge them. There is not much to be done about the fact that the world at large is a cringe festival of nightmares. A lot of those judgments are just kind of locked in place, but there is a ton you can do to get to a point where your intimate relationships and daily activities aren't causing you misery. The goal is to eventually be around people and doing things where you're mostly having positive judgments like, that is a cool outfit, I do agree with what that person just said, and I do respect this person. And if you aren't, then when you get the freedom to, start trying to find these things and people. And so once you cut out the judgments from your life that you feel are bad and not helping you in any way, it really makes all the other ones even more fun to relish and enjoy. <laughs>